What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an AMD Ryzen AI7 350 powered single board computer from ASRock. This is coming to us from ASRock Industrial and we've taken a look at a few of these in the past. Over on the website these are listed in their single board computer section but I want to show you here. If we move down here they're 4x4s. We've got the 4x4 AI350. And I'll tell you what, I think a lot of people kind of underestimated what this uh, Ryzen AI7350 can do. It's an 8-core, 16-thread Zen 5 APU with RDNA 3.5 graphics. In fact, this has the Radeon 860M. There's only 8 compute units here, but the iGPU does clock up to 3000 megahertz. And with this new 4x4 AI350, I do have to add my own RAM and storage. I'm going to be going with uh, 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600. Unfortunately, from the BIOS, we can't do any overclocking with that RAM. And when it comes to storage, I've just got a 2 terabyte PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSD that we're going to be adding here. And this board does have another M.2 slot. It supports a 2242 M.2 SSD. So you can add quite a bit of storage to this thing. And there's one other thing I always like to add to these boards just to kind of keep it up off of the desk. And it's just some of these little plastic standoffs. I bought a pack of these on Amazon a while ago and they've come in really handy. I usually just leave the fan and heat sink just facing upwards so it can kind of sit on the desk. And I've seen a lot of people do a bunch of different projects with these boards from mini game cubes, tiny PCs, home automation systems. I mean, it's really up to you. But the main reason I wanted to get my hands on this was for that Ryzen AI7350. And once I've got the standoffs installed, you see we've got easy access to the rear I.O. here. Power input, two full-size USB 3.2 ports and dual ethernet ports. Unfortunately, only one of these is 2.5, the other one is gig, but you can definitely get by with something like that. And around front, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, another full-size USB 3.2 port, and two USB 4 ports that run at a 40 gig protocol. So when it comes to the overall specs, that AMD Ryzen AI7 350 is really interesting when you compare it to others. This is actually an AMD Kraken Point APU. 8 cores, 16 threads, but with this we've got 4 Zen 5 cores up to 5 GHz and 4 Zen 5C cores up to 3.5. So we've basically got those efficiency cores that don't clock as high, and I do think that this would work perfect in a handheld gaming PC. We're going to explore that in a future video, so keep an eye on the channel. But we've also got that AMD Radeon 860M. It's based on RDNA 3.5. We've got eight compute units and it clocks up to 3000 megahertz. The only downside to this board is that RAM speed. You can do up to 96 gigabytes of SODIMM RAM, but it only runs up to 5600 megahertz. And when it comes down to it, we're working with an iGPU. It needs to rely on that system memory as VRAM. And theoretically, if we have faster RAM here, we could see better iGPU performance. But for what we have, I think this thing's putting down some pretty good power like it is. So getting right in here with Windows 11 Pro, as you can see, we've got that Ryzen AI7 350 with the Radeon 860M, eight cores, 16 threads. And of course, that 860M is an eight compute unit iGPU, but it's based on RDNA 3.5. We've got that clock up to 3000 megahertz, and I've dedicated eight gigs of VRAM. So far, I've got two systems with this 860, and the highest I can go with the TDP is 60 watts no matter what I do. But I'll tell you, from 45 up to 60 really doesn't make too much of a difference, especially when it comes to gaming. It's pretty efficient here. Give you a look uh, from CPU-Z. We'll just go ahead and run a stress test right down here with hardware info. Just on the CPU side, up to around 51 watts. Once we put a load on that iGPU all together, up to around 60, 61. So we've got like a 10 watt boost up from this. And the last thing I wanted to show you before we get into benchmarks here is just the clock on that iGPU. Go ahead and run Furmark. When running this system so far, I really haven't seen it hit 3000 megahertz all the way across. You can see it gets real close to it. In some cases, it may fluctuate, go up there for a second, come back down. But yeah, this should really reach 3000 megahertz when it's all out. The next thing I want to take a look at are some benchmarks that I ran on this thing. And right now, I'd say one of the best APUs on the market is the HX370, mainly due to the iGPU. And I kind of want to see how this stacks up against it. And the first benchmark we have here is Geekbench 6 on this AI350, single core coming in with a pretty impressive 2856 
Multi 13,110. And just to kind of give you an idea, the Ryzen AI HX 370 is 12 cores and 24 threads. Single core over there at about 64 watts is 2,970. Multi 15,179. And to tell you the truth, going into this, I thought it would be way ahead. It's actually not that far off, at least when it comes to the CPU side of things. But moving over to the iGPU is probably a different story. But the last one I wanted to test here was Time Spy, and on the AI350, we got a total score of 3,135. 370, one of the best scores I've ever gotten out of it, was 4,269. And keep in mind, on that HX370, we had 8,000 megahertz RAM. We're actually only running 5,600 on the AI350. But these are synthetic benchmarks, and now I want to get into some gameplay to show you what this thing can do, and it's actually pretty impressive. Again, we can only go up to around 60 watts here, and that's totally maxed out. Here's Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings with no FSR, and yeah, I mean, it's fully playable here. I kind of expected we'd see some pretty decent performance out of this. Very well optimized game, and even on older iGPUs based on RDNA 2, with the correct settings, you can get some pretty decent frame rates. We're seeing an average of around 95 FPS. Next up, we've got Spider-Man 2 900p medium settings with FSR set to balance. I was really hoping it would do a little better than this at 900p. As you can see, we can't quite hit 60, but there's something we can do to get much higher frame rates out of this. And if this was a higher end dedicated GPU, it's not something that I would like to do, but we can always add frame gen to these iGPUs. And I think that's kind of a perfect place to use that kind of technology. Lower powered devices that kind of need the extra help. With it enabled, we're now seeing an average of around 70 FPS. Here's GTA 5 Enhanced Edition. We're at 1080 high, and this is not the high preset. That actually takes some of the stuff up to very high. I've just gone down the list, taking it all down to high. FSR is set to balance. By the end of this run, I had an average of 78 FPS. Here's Marvel Rivals, 720p, low, and initially I went into this at 1080. It really did kind of fall on its face at that resolution. But right now, the game doesn't have a 900p option for some odd reason. I've tried full screen, windowed, borderless, Hopefully they do add a 900p option later on down the road. It's still in early development, but it would be nice to have it right now just to see what it would do. I got a feeling we could run it over 60, kind of mid 60s at 900p. Moving over to Doom Eternal, we're at 1080 low settings and I'm not using any kind of resolution scale. On a lot of iGPUs at 1080, I do set it to around 80%, but with this one I didn't need it. And we could probably get a lot more out of it just uh, taking that resolution down a bit, but it's still giving us a pretty solid average of 76 FPS. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, and I wanted to go into this at 1080. Now, just looking at the performance at low with FSR set to balanced, we'll probably have to take this on down to around 900p. Because even with it set up like this, we just can't break that 60 mark. And I did try FSR at performance. It doesn't really help out that much. But there's another thing we could do here instead of dropping that resolution way down. Just like we did with Spider-Man 2, we can add a little bit of FSR frame gen. We've got FSR 3 frame gen using those same settings here. And now, instead of getting an average of around 54 FPS, we're up in the 90s with it. So yeah, it actually feels pretty decent like this. And again, I know a lot of people out there just don't like fake frames, but when you need it and it helps out, then I don't mind using it whatsoever, especially on a lower powered system like this. In my opinion, what we've seen so far out of the Ryzen AI7 350 has been pretty impressive, but we've been at around 60 watts, and I don't think that's what this chip is about. At the beginning of the video, I did mention that I think this would be perfect for a handheld gaming PC, and I want to show you why. Here's Doom Eternal, we're at 720p, and if you take a look at Afterburner, we're at an 18 watt TDP. We're getting a pretty decent frame rate here, albeit we are at 720p right now, but on a smaller 7 inch display, I think 720p looks pretty good. And at an 18 watt TDP, seeing an average of around 91 FPS, again, I'll have a full video coming up soon, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. 
So overall, I think we're seeing some pretty good performance out of this little board. And obviously the reason I wanted to get it was for that Ryzen AI7 350. I think at 60 watts is a little much for this. We're just getting diminishing returns. I think 45 watts is a sweet spot here for the 350 if you're going to use it in this type of form factor or a mini PC form factor. But uh, what this thing's really about are those lower TDPs. Either way, I've been having a lot of fun with this setup. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links in the description to ASRock Industrial's website. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the Ryzen AI7 350, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.